stage. Uh, I forgot the stage name, but I Sonic Heroes. Yeah, like right, that's soundtracks are fun. Shoutouts to uh, Dark Blues for making all these cool soundtracks as we get right into the game and get to listen to the sound of the video game serenade us into this loser's quarterfinal set. Fawn and not Steelix. No, this is Jennifer. We'll get right out, right out started. The stream two disappeared. Oh, excuse me. On my screen. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Technical difficulties. Yeah, thanks, Star GG. I'll kill you, Star GG. <laughs> there it is. All right, we're st Send. we're slowly building it back up. But you know these players. You know their thrive. You know their vibe, and you know that Fawn is in a very commanding position at the start here. But the chase down from Jen for just the jab, super nice. I'm mean, really digging how many players have, how many Palutena players uh, have been taking a page out of Chag's book and using a lot more jab from Palu since. Mm -hmm. You know, she doesn't have a ton of amazing grounded option, but that jab is pretty big. You can go into a rapid jab, and it's it's, pretty, it, it's probably all right. It's a pretty good poke option. Yeah. That being said, though, Fawn taking the first stock pretty handily, only 56%. But Jen able to set up the down throw pressure. Oh, but misses the neutral air, and now Fawn gets the opportunity to set up some reversals. Looking like she looking like he's on the hunt here for a back air or an up air, something to close out the stock. Another back air, keeping things very safe right now is Jen, not wanting to let any amount Ooh. of damage, but the huge up smash lasting for so long there on the neutral getup, and all it took from Jen was a little bit of conditioning, which that down tilt applied perfectly. Yep, basically bringing us right back into an even game. More jabs to set Font up at the ledge. Explosive Flame getting rid of that gunman. I, not quite finding anything out of that neutral air. It's a little bit too high percent. Font able to retreat to that uh, top platform. Now just playing around this center stage with that can, trying to Fawn trying to find some space for herself. And now using the can also to disincentivize the top platform as well. Almost catching the uh, teleport cancel. Very nice stuff from Fawn. It's, it's been such a dominant performance when it comes to like stage control. But this is where Jen makes his money. This is where Palutena makes their money. And Jen, a perfect example of that type of gameplay. Just lock down at ledge, turn individual pieces of advantage into long stretches of uh, shutting down so many options and closing out stocks on uh, when you have your opponent in a uh, deep ledge trap. Still having to force Fawn back there again into the runoff neutral air, trying to force Fawn into such deep, Ooh. deep recovery routes, able to finally get that down tilt on the high ish high enough recovery from Fawn to turn it into a down tilt back air. Super nice stuff from Jen, who now gets to play the survival game knowing that uh, Duck Hunt is not exactly the most potent of raw stray hit kill power. You got a lot of setting up to do. Yeah, and I mean, Jen really making use of this stage. We've seen so many of these warp cancels to find his way around like the gunman or the can just uh, in a in an angle that Fawn just hasn't had covered yet. Another can, but at 178, even on Battlefield is not gonna do it. The dash attack not gonna do it. Okay, can number two is gonna close out the stock. Yeah, Vaughn needing hundred after the hit. That's damn. That's a big number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that a lot. Like trying to go for the clay pigeon out of a forward throw, but I think the gunman there made it a little bit awkward. Mm -hmm. right. Fighting through everything, fighting through the whole world with that dash attack, and once again these teleport cancels just. Jen finding his way into uh, portions of the stage that Fawn just hasn't had covered. I bring away, but the down to, oh, the knockback angle is disrupted. And now Jen Ooh, able to hit the tech. I love that setup from Fawn, but Jen just one step ahead and no resources on Fawn turns that into a back air and Fawn reeling back in her chair because that is just something you gotta, you gotta swallow down. It's like, mm -hmm. all right, that happened. He better player. Time to move on to game two and see if you can get the same type of uh, same type of groove going because everything was there for Fawn up until the very end. Oh, 
smash active for so long. And I think if we can look at the, the last stock, uh, I think we might not be able to get it before we start. But yeah, this this was pretty much just checkmate. You saw Jen going out, forcing Fawn to air dodge there, and just waiting waiting for the easy back air afterwards. Uh oh, Pan wonder... is out. Oh, that, I mean, it's in the past now, but man, the fact that Fawn was so close to closing out, and it's like really starting to pull together so many different setups. Like we saw like jab setting up onto platforms. We saw like really understanding like the different angles that. Uh, that Duck Hunt can play around with. And look at that, the pummels on the platform waiting for the can to bounce up. Just like amazing situational awareness that you're playing around and turning like turning the like, mountains into molehills <laughs> or molehills into mountains. Either way, it is a lot of advantage for Fawn. Yet, Jen is the one in the driver's seat and with through almost every bit of like scrappiness and interactivity that these two go through. Yeah, and I'm actually a little bit surprised that uh, Battlefield was was the uh, counterpick of choice for Fawn. Uh, Jen's bands were FD and Small Battlefield, but I mean, Jen has been making such good use of the platforms. We saw earlier the high warp to the top Battlefield platform, and Jen just able to make it back into back into neutral. Oh, wow. Ooh. Huge, huge read, but you can make that read as Duck Hunt. Like, what are you, what are you dying to? Yeah. <laughs> like, Battlefield Blast Zones, Duck Hunt not having a kill throw. Like, these are these are risks that may seem huge, but it feels like Jen has really, really measured around every single aspect of Duck Hunt what the character's strengths are and, even more importantly, what the character's weaknesses are. Yeah, Fawn put in a very tough position there with... You know, just the way that Jen has been making all of his money with these edge guards. And it just feels like once Jen has been able to find that one singular hit, he's able he's been able to have that route to get you to the ledge. And from there it's just you know whittling down all of your options, all of your recovery mix-ups, until finally there's just nothing left in the tank. So much going for Jen at this rate. Oh, I love the teleport back. The high teleport as well, so you snap the ledge a little bit quicker. You go uh, you able to bypass any sort of those two frames and turn it into like just so, so uh, the, the quickest of advantage states and the quickest of follow ups. Yep, so, and Jen is going to continue to be the king of the string stream setup. Uh, and the next challenger coming up is Mega in loser semis. And just check all of this out. Like the the way that Jen plays around like the setups and the differences of so many of these characters, like the cleanest of pivot grabs, like the the teleport high into the using the extra boost in air acceleration to, from the jump from ledge. Like all of this stuff that just makes Palutena so so good and so hard to play with is Partially, she has a lot of good hitboxes, and that mm -hmm. privilege is there. We don't need to talk about Palu back air. That moves insane. But the the base stats on Palutena. The mobility. I, the mobility. Mm -hmm. The the fact that she has a really good initial dash. The fact that her air acceleration is pretty high up there. I think it's like, like a 1.15, I think it's so. 1.115, something like that. Like so, it, it, it's really, really solid. And the fact that you have that strong mobility as a foundation means that she can have access to more of her kit at any given point, while some characters like Duck Hunt need to take that time to set up mm -hmm. and build towards those big, big payoffs, 